Abdul Jalil is a self-made man. His father was a struggling shop owner. But Jalil made his fortune building mansions in Bangladeshi villages. That house is my best work. In all of Salet, you won't find a house that's finer or classier than this one. The owner had really good taste, and he was willing to pay whatever it took to make it special. The owner of this house lives in the UK. 95% of British Bangladeshis are from Salet. Many have invested in their hometowns. And most of the cash has gone into buying land and building lavish homes like this one. Ayas Mia left 20 years ago for London and is today running for political office as a member of the Labour Party. He comes home at least once a year. In every con countryside, in every village, uh, you don't have, we don't have any uh, good uh, road or communication system. But now, wherever you will go, you can take your car with you, plus everywhere the electricity. And uh, it's a bit different, bit different. Not a bit, I'll say huge difference. Silet's reliance on remittances means its future is inextricably tied to that of its migrants. Money from abroad has made this region very wealthy. But since a global financial crisis hit a few years back, fewer and fewer of these buildings are being constructed. With no other major industries in this area, people here are finding it hard to sustain their incomes. Abdul Jalil used to employ 150 people. Now he has only about 40 employees. Maruf Ali used to work for Jalil, but lately he's finding that jobs are drying up. The money we are earning isn't as much as it used to be, but our living costs are much higher. Before you could earn less and still save. Now we earn more than before, but we can't save anything at all. Foreign wealth has been beneficial for Silet and its people. But without the presence of strong local industries, much of the hard work by Maruf Ali and his co-workers could come undone. Mahir Sattar, Al Jazeera, Silet.